How is it going? I hope you're doing well and thank you for tuning in this video. Today I'm here with my paper review for WWE WrestleMania Backlash 2021. Let's go ahead and dive right in the show, which of course started off on the kickoff. Sheamus issued an open challenge, which was accepted by Ricochet. And for the time they got, I thought it was a fairly good match. Sheamus doing his typical heel work that he's been doing lately, you know, throwing over uh, and working over the smaller opponent, you know, tossing Ricochet around like he's absolutely nothing, doing a forceful smile like the Joker. Like I said, typical Sheamus heel work that he's been implementing lately. Uh, Ricochet for the offense, he got in. I thought it looked fairly good. A lot of springboards, uh, a lot of aerial offense. He looked pretty decent for, like I said, the uh, offense he did get in against Sheamus. So it was an enjoyable match, uh, enjoyable ending as well. Sheamus was a bro kick. Ricochet was able to avoid, avoid it. Went for a pin, but Sheamus got out of it, ended up hitting a raining knee strike on Ricochet uh, for the one, two, three. So Sheamus defeats Ricochet on the kickoff show for his open challenge, which, you know, I didn't mind. Obviously, I don't. I don't think anyone should ever mind when the champion gets a win. So uh, I did not mind Sheamus winning uh, at all. And, of course, afterwards, Sheamus gets a promo, uh, which Ricochet attacks him afterwards and then puts on Sheamus' clothes and dabs on him. So, yeah, that, that really happened. Completely unnecessary and stupid, but what can you do? It's not WWE unless they give a champion a win and then completely embarrass him afterwards. That's just how they operate for whatever stupid reason. So it is what it is. And, of course, also on the kickoff show, uh, Dominic Mysterio was attacked by Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler. Thought I'd mention that because obviously that would play in a factor for the tag team title match later on. So thought I'd go ahead and address it now. And then, of course, the main pay-per-view opened up with the triple threat match for the Raw Women's Championship. Rhea Ripley defending against Asuka and Charlotte Flair. This was a great way to open the main pay-per-view, if you ask me. I thought this was, uh, was, was great. It was excellent. Charlotte Flair was the glue honestly this match she really held it together as uh, she had the the best out of Rhea Ripley and Asuka you know they obviously haven't didn't have the greatest match at Wrestlemania they didn't have that great of matches either uh on the Raws to follow so uh Charlotte Flair definitely was uh, uh a needed addition if you ask me and uh like I said she brought out the best out of Rhea Ripley and Asuka a lot of great transitions and spots and and uh and just moments in this match I thought all three women were able to implement each other or, you know, make sure they all got each other stuff in very well. There was a time where Rhea Ripley was shining, then a time where Asuka was shining, then a time where, obviously, you know, Charlotte was shining. So I like that they were able to make sure everyone looked good in this matchup. It wasn't a, a dull moment in the match either where it was one-on-one -on -one and, you know, someone was kind of resting. Everyone was kind of able to do something at the same time. So I did like that they were, you know, making sure everyone was, you know, doing something at, you know, at every moment. So I appreciated that. Charlotte, of course, did her uh, moonsault to the outside. Uh, back in the ring, she ended up hitting a double uh, natural selection and uh, tried to pin both of them. Tried to pull Roman Reigns, you know, to establish her dominance as a queen of the women's division. Uh, but, of course, Rhea Ripley and Asuka both kicked out. Went for the moonsault, but Asuka and Rhea Ripley both got out of the way. And then, of course, the ending moments of this match were, uh, were really fun. I thought it was a really good closing sequence. Uh, you know, everyone was pretty much trying to pin one another or try to submit one another uh and the spilling to the outside where charlotte gets thrown uh to the outside she on the apron trying to get back in uh rhea ripley shoves oscar into charlotte which charlotte gives oscar a big boot which allows rhea ripley to immediately hit oscar with a rip tie for the one two three so rhea ripley retains the raw women's championship like i said great match to open the show expect the rhea ripley to retain i think if charlotte uh beats her and honestly she probably will it'll be one-on-one -on -one. they're not gonna do a triple threat they're probably gonna have it one-on-one -on -one and like I said, Asuka, I think, was just there to uh, take the pin in my predictions video, and that's exactly what she did. So, yeah, definitely was a great way to open the show. And uh, like I said, I thought Charlotte was definitely the glue that held this match together. And then following that, we had the SmackDown Tag Team Championship match. Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode defending against Ray and Dominic Mysterio. Of course, Ray ends up coming out alone uh, because Dominic got attacked, like I said, on the chaos show. Uh, and Ray told him, you know what, hey, sit here and heal. I'm going to do this by myself. Uh, so for a good you know, good portion of this match, it was pretty much a handicap. But uh, it was it was a lot of fun. Ray looked great. He was able to out, you know, maneuver and outsmart Robert Roode and Dolph Ziggler. He was doing a lot of great innovative spots. Uh, like he would have Robert Roode tied up in the ropes, but he would fake like running at Robert Roode and do a baseball slide uh, into a splash onto the outside of Ziggler. Uh, just a lot of great stuff Mysterio was doing. And he looked phenomenal, man. Like... Uh, I just feel like Ray doesn't get the chance to wrestle a whole lot, but when he does, he still he looks ten years younger than he actually is, man. It's it's incredible how uh, age is against him. It's it's fantastic. Oh, age is against him in terms of he he doesn't age is what I mean. You know, not against him as in it's he, he's aging quicker, but it's against him as he's not aging at all. So I thought Ray looked fantastic. Uh, obviously, the numbered game would uh, catch up to him. A lot of great. Uh, 
tag work from Rude Ziggler. You know, I haven't really seen a whole lot of their tag stuff, to be perfectly honest. I don't really watch SmackDown a whole lot. But uh, I thought their heel work was great here. I thought they were fantastic as a team. I thought they were really gelling together. Uh, they just complement each other very, very well, I thought. So uh, I really enjoyed their tag work. You know, doing a double, uh, you know, Rude doing the wheelbarrow, you know, wheelbarrowing Mysterio up into a fan from Ziggler, or when Rude uh, just threw uh, Mysterio to the outside doing a baseball slide uh, to the outside, and Ziggler is hitting with a huge super kick. Absolutely love that spot there, but uh, obviously at one point Mysterio was able to fight back, uh, gave Robert Rude a, um, not a DDT, but he gave him, uh, I forgot exactly what he gave him, but he was able to get out, out of uh, Robert Rude's hold. Uh, which allowed Dominic Mysterio to make his little, you know, comeback. Came back, had uh, him and Rude went out for a good little while. Uh, very, very excited finish too, by the way. You know, uh, everyone's getting their stuff in. A lot of great near falls. You know, Ziggler hits a, a zigzag on Mysterio for a great near fall. Uh, everyone's getting their stuff in. And then uh, Ray hits Robert Rude with a 619. Tags in Dominic. Uh, does a uh, senton to the outside and does a f freaking flip to Ziggler. Takes Ziggler out with a sunset flip into the barricade, which allows Dominic to go up top. Dominic's a huge splash on Robert Roode and one, two, three. Ray and Dominic Mysterio are your brand new SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Uh, definitely expect that to happen, and I'm very glad it did. I think Mysterio's as uh, Tag Team Champions definitely uh, is going to be a fun ride. Uh, ride. I think they'll have a fun reign as champions, and uh, it'll be interesting to see how they do. But uh, I'm excited. Thought it was a very exciting uh, Tag Team Title match. Uh, one of the better tag team title matches we've seen in quite some time, to be perfectly honest. I thought uh, just the story that was being told was very simple, but like I said, you know, Ziggler and Rude were excellent heels, and obviously the Mysterios are very easy to get behind, and I thought everything just, just meshed very well and produced a, uh, a great SmackDown tag team title match. So, yeah, Mysterios walk out your brand new tag team champions, and uh, great stuff there. And uh, speaking of great, we go to the complete opposite of great, which was the Lumberjack match between The Miz and Damian Priest. I'm not going to talk too much about it because it was what it was. Obviously, the Lumberjacks were zombies. Obviously, this entire uh, match was to promote the Army of the Dead movie coming out on Netflix So because Batista's in it. So that's exactly what this was. Uh, Miz and Priest were just doing some basic stuff. They'd go into the outside. They did a spot, of course, where Miz and Priest were fighting the zombies on the outside to take them out. Uh, Morrison came out and started taking out a bunch of Priest, not Priest, a bunch of zombies until he ended up getting dragged under, uh, you know, by the zombies when he got mauled by them. And then, you know, Miz and Priest are wrestling in the ring. Damien Priest hits his finish. One, two, three. Damien Priest defeats the Miz. And then afterwards, uh, he, the Miz is devoured by zombies, so... Yeah, uh, that's all I'm gonna say. I didn't hate it, but I did not like it by any means. I'm just—it's one of those things where it happened. That's all I'm gonna say. It happened. That's all. That's that's all my thoughts are gonna be on it. It happened. Uh, following that, we had the SmackDown Women's Championship: Bianca Belair defending against Bailey, uh, which was a pretty solid match overall. I really liked the intensity from Bailey here. I thought she played a great veteran role in terms of her her trying to outsmart Bianca and you know uh, being aware of Bianca's offense. You know, Bianca would go for something and like when she went for the hair whip, you know, Bailey was smart enough to realize, oh, she's gonna try and whip me. I'm gonna get out of the way, and she'd get out of the way. So I thought Bailey was very aware of what was happening, and uh, she was very aggressive. Like I said as well, I thought she was playing an excellent heel role in this match. And Bianca, of course, she's great. She's excellent. You know, what isn't she? Uh, she had a great showing as well against Bailey. Uh, so no complaints about uh, no complaints at all. Like I said, that was a very solid match. Tease a count on finish uh, at one point in the match as well. Uh, Bailey went for a suicide dive, which when she went for the dive, uh, freaking Bianca Belair completely got out of the way. So Bailey ate complete shit, uh, which allowed Bianca Belair to lift her and just freaking face slam her right into the apron, threw her back in the ring. Uh, Bailey kicked out. And uh, it was a fun uh, finishing sequence. You know, Bailey hit the bay to belly uh, for a great near fall right there. Uh, Bianca was trying to hit the K uh, KOD, but Bailey was outsmarting her getting out of it. And then, uh, you know, Bailey was doing everything she could to avoid the hair. But long and behold, it was Bianca's hair that, caught, that uh, got her because, you know, B Bianca was able to roll her up and she wrapped her hair around Bailey's legs and, uh, and uh, held it to her to secure her legs in which was just so fucking smart. Uh, I thought that was great. I haven't seen a finish like that before, and I thought it was very innovative. So, uh, obviously, Bianca retains the championship against Bailey. Uh, they'll probably have a rematch on SmackDown or something like that because, obviously, how the finish played out. They're going to have Bailey obviously, complain about it and whatnot. So, 
Hopefully they, they uh, do it on SmackDown and not hold it for Hell in a Cell, which is uh, actually the next pay-per-view. Uh, Hell in a Cell will be the next pay-per-view, uh, which is surprising because obviously it's always, you know, in the fall time. So the seat in the summer is uh, is very weird. So uh, hopefully they don't hold it off till that. No reason to hold it off till that. Just do it on SmackDown if you need a rematch. So. But yeah, like I said, overall the match itself was solid. Uh, following that, we had the triple threat match for the WWE Championship. Bobby Lashley defending against Drew McIntyre and Braun Strowman. And holy hell, what another great triple threat, uh, triple threat match we got here between all three of them. Uh, just three big guys beating the holy fuck out of each other. And that's exactly what we got here. A lot of great stuff from all three men. Very similar to the women as well. They were all, you know, uh, had their own opportunities to shine. They were all implementing each other, you know, making sure no one was left out at any means really or any time really so uh, i appreciated that that was really good early on uh, a lot of dominance from lashley and pretty much from everybody uh to the point where um lashley and mcintyre actually had a double team stroman and try and take him out but stroman ended up taking them out uh stroman actually did a, a dive off the apron uh, which is very impressive you know what Braun Strowman, I will say this, he was very impressive in this match. He worked a good portion of it. Uh, he did a lot of great stuff with it. I thought uh, he definitely uh, had a really good showing in this match. So Braun Strowman uh, definitely deserves some credit in this match, if you ask me. But yeah, the match spilled on the outside. Uh, where Strowman had some steel steps. Uh, tried to take out Bobby Lashley, but Lashley was able to avoid them. Uh, Lashley and McIntyre fell up on the stage where McIntyre threw uh, Lashley through the LED uh, board. So that was a way to take Lashley out for a little bit. Uh, then Strowman absolutely just eviscerated McIntyre uh, back in the ring. Look, looked like Strowman was actually going to beat McIntyre. Uh, you know, end up hitting a senton, uh, sent him for the power slam, but McIntyre rolled out. Uh, when McIntyre rolled out, Strowman was trying to hit the Strowman Express, but McIntyre caught him into a belly, uh, the belly suplex, and Strowman nearly landed on his fucking head. But that was an awesome spot. But then McIntyre tried to hit a Claymore, but then. Uh, Strowman countered that into a powerbomb through the announce table. There's a whole lot of shit going on in the match. It's absolutely awesome. Uh, back in the ring, uh, Strowman and McIntyre are just exchanging blows uh, to the point where uh, McIntyre uh, hits a Michinoku driver on Strowman. Very, very impressive. Great stuff there. Uh, great near fall. Uh, then, of course, you know, McIntyre set up for the Claymore. Uh, Strowman tries to the running power slam, but McIntyre gets out of it. Ends up hitting the Claymore. But other than Lashley comes out of nowhere, uh, throws McIntyre out of the ring. Strowman gets up. Lashley hits another huge spear, uh, or hits a huge spear to finish off Strowman in one, two, three. Bobby Lashley is still your WWE champion. Wow. Very, very exciting match. Very, very fun sprint. Like I said, it was just three big men beating the shit out of each other, going balls to the walls. And uh, yeah, it made for a very, very fun triple threat match. So really enjoyed that. Uh, obviously, you know, Lashley and McIntyre would not surprise me if that's the Hell in a Cell match for the WWE Championship at Hell in a Cell. Uh, I guess they very, very, uh, very well see that happening. Uh, but you know what? Honestly, I, I'd prefer Lashley just to move on. I'd rather him just have a new challenger completely. But I think they're probably going to have Lashley and McIntyre one last time uh, before it's all said and done. So, yeah, uh, great triple threat. Really enjoyed that. And then, of course, followed suit was the main event, which was for the Universal Championship. Roman Reigns defending against Cesaro. And Roman Reigns continues his streak of incredible Universal title matches. He has another one right here. This match was fantastic. Absolutely loved it. I thought Roman Reigns arguably had his best work here. I thought he was excellent in terms of his character work, you know, the mannerisms, his facial expressions, or how he would mock Cesaro, you know, as he was doing holds. That way he wasn't just sitting there doing a hold for 20 minutes. He was making sure it was entertaining at least. Uh, I thought Roman Reigns looked fantastic. And don't get me wrong, Cesaro was incredible in this match as well. You know, the story with him, you know, injuring his arm very early on and Roman Reigns working out, working on his arm and then Cesaro, you know, uh, selling the arm as well, you know, to the point where when he had Roman Reigns in a sharpshooter, he had a, you know, switch arms because his arm hurt so much. And once he realized he couldn't hold it anymore, he switched from the sharpshooter to a cross face. Just everything about this match was just phenomenal. This, they were incredible. Incredible stuff from Roman Reigns and Cesaro. Uh, I applaud both men. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was very obvious Roman Reigns going to retain the championship. But Roman Reigns so damn good. Honestly, I got to the point where I thought maybe Cesaro is going to pull it off. Maybe he's going to beat Roman Reigns. And, uh, you know, Cesaro uh, was selling a lot for Roman. Uh, but he uh, had some great moments in this match. You know, he did a great uh, dive into the outside where he just uh, did a spin 
uh, twirl twist into the out to the outside into Roman Reigns. Uh, had a great comeback on Roman where he was able to do the uh, uh, suplex from the uh, middle rope from the outside apron to the inside of the ring. Uh, just Cesaro looked absolutely fantastic with the springboard uppercut. And one spot I really love in particular where was Cesaro going for the springboard uppercut again. But uh, Roman Reigns countering into a Superman punch. I thought that was a great moment right there in the match. And uh, this match in total was just a lot of fun. Uh, Roman Reigns hit a powerbomb with Cesaro. Uh, Cesaro barely kicked out of it. Just his arm getting worked on by Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns, you know, shouting out Dana Bryan in the match. Just... Excellent stuff. Excellent stuff for Roman Reigns and Cesaro. Absolutely love the match. And uh, I thought the, the finish made Cesaro look absolutely fucking incredible as well. Cesaro was doing everything he could to fight out of Roman Reigns. You know, Reigns would put him in the guillotine. Uh, Cesaro would somehow fight out of it. But Roman Reigns would, you know, uh, somehow get uh, Cesaro back in the guillotine. Uh, and Cesaro was fighting out of it a lot. You know, he got back on his feet, I think, twice. And then he was able to kind of... Uh, uh, get Reigns let go a few times, uh, but when it came down to it, Cesaro uh, was able to not get out of it. Uh, he was able to pass out. Roman Reigns choked him out. Uh, so R- Roman Reigns retains the Universal Championship. Incredible stuff. An incredible match against Cesaro. Uh, would not mind a rematch by any means, even though you know Roman Reigns did beat him clean. So there's no really, real, there's no real reason to do a rematch. But I think uh, you know down the line, would definitely love to see a Roman Reigns Cesaro rematch. So. Incredible stuff. Loved it. Of course, afterwards, you know, Roman Reigns, uh, you know, Jay Uso comes out to give, you know, Roman Reigns uh, the crown on the, tri- uh, you know, the tribal, the chief with the Loe and everything. And then decides to beat down Cesaro, gives him a super kick, goes over the splash. And then out of nowhere, Seth Rollins comes out and uh, Seth Rollins looks at Roman Reigns and then immediately attacks Cesaro, beats the holy hell, of, hell out of Cesaro, gives him the stomp on the outside of the ring. Uh, rolls his arm into the steel chair, uh, throws his arm in, into the into the post, wrapped around the steel chair. So pretty much this, you know, Rollins beating the shit out of Cesaro for a good little few minutes. And then that ends the pay-per-view. So I'm pretty sure we might get Cesaro and Seth Rollins inside Hell in a Cell or potentially a triple threat with Roman Reigns. I don't know. I'm perfectly fine with either. Uh, I think it's more so, though, Hell in a Cell with uh, Seth Rollins and Cesaro. I think that's good, and that way, you know, Roman Reigns doesn't have to defend inside Hell in a Cell. That way, you can give SmackDown to Hell in a Cell to, to Cesaro and Seth Rollins if necessary. So, yeah, Seth Rollins beats down Cesaro to close the pay-per-view. And uh, overall, I thought WrestleMania Backlash was a tremendous show. Definitely one of WWE's best pay-per-views in a very, very long time. Uh, I don't remember, honestly, having this much fun watching a pay-per-view. You know, at WrestleMania, both nights were very fun. But this show, you know, minus the Miz and Damian Priest match from top to bottom was just spectacular. I had a lot of fun with it. That was a really great pay-per-view. And uh, hopefully WWE can keep that momentum going forward. You know, obviously going the, into the pay-per-view. I wasn't excited for it, but I didn't have doubt that it wouldn't be at least good. So I'm excited and happy that, uh, you know, it turned out the way it did. And uh, it's got me looking forward to, uh, you know, to the future. So hopefully they can keep that momentum going forward and whatnot. And, uh... Yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, please feel free to like below. And of course, until next time, I'll see you guys and thank you guys for watching the video.